Joshua. I finished up last week talking about and, uh, and and how many felt this week? Did you feel strong and encouraged? Did you feel like if a situation came that you can handle it? Good, because that's it. Because we just do one step at a time. Amen. Baby steps. No big steps in God. Baby steps. When you try to go too fast, you'll blow a piston, get a flat tire. And I, I, I want to finish up at night, and I, I wanted to finish up for this is the third time that God commanded Joshua, and then we're going to go straight into Joshua 3. He said, this is my command to you, Joshua. After he told him to be strong and courageous, he told him to obey by the laws, he told him that you're going to need all these things to cross the Jordan. You're going to need to be strong and courageous. You're going to need to obey God. You're going to need to study your word, and you're going to need to meditate on the word that you have studied day and night. That's not going holy Christian there and go, ha, ah. Meditation means that you contemplate the word of God. You recite the word of God, not verbally, but in your mind. You live and breathe the word of God. You take that one little scripture, Dante, Romans 8 and 28, and you memorize it, Dante. And old Dante, you say it every time you go through the life struggle, Dante. You keep saying that word, because we know that all things work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. You let that word be inside of you, and therefore every day that you're going through something, your mouth might say something else, your mind might think something else, but your thoughts are on God. You say, God, I don't know how you're going to make it. I don't know how I'm going to get through this, but you're going to make it through because, Father, you said in your word that I've hid in my heart, that I've meditated on day and night, that I know that I know that even though I don't see tomorrow, I know that all things are going to work together. Amen, Dante? Amen. And that's an example of meditating on God's word. And then, so to cross Jordan, we need to do those things. And there's more things that I'm going to preach about. But what God is saying this, he says, now that I've told you, you need to be strong and courageous. You need to obey. You need to study your word. You need to meditate on me. You will prosper and succeed if you do what I ask you to do. And that you need to meditate, which is to think deeply or carefully about something. He says, now this is my commandment. Now he's no longer asking you to be strong and courageous. He's commanding you. See, ask is different and commanding is absolute. That means he has babied you. He has held your hand. He has asked you kindly. He has reasoned with you. He let you reason back with him. He's instructed you and fortified you. When you said, oh God, I can't do it. He says, yes, you can. Yes, you can. I'm not going to leave you. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I've called you to do this. And he says, now, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Scourge, scourge. For the Lord your God is with you. For the Lord your God is with you. For the Lord your God is with you. For the Lord your God is with you too. And you too. And you too of twos. And you two twos. And you two twos. And you. Wherever. Wherever you go. Turn to Joshua. There's no football coach like God, huh? There's no rock me or against Lombardi speech like God, huh? There ain't no greater cheerleader that can yell and flip like Seth's girlfriend in the air like God. He's the ultimate cheerleader. Come on, you can do it. Jesus, come look. Michael, come, Ariel, everybody, let her go. Woo. Oh, Lord, she's about to lay hands on the sick. Come here, Jesus. Come here, Jesus. I can just see God. Do it, Ivan. Do it. And it might be like, yeah, Ivan, do it. Do it. Woo. And God says, Holy Spirit, go. Bam. Boom. The dead to someone. Woo. Woo. All the heaven rejoices. Amen. Amen. Mm. Yeah. I get pictures how they be acting. Oh, you think they're all religious? There's no religion in heaven. Thank you. That's man-man. There's backflips. 
shouting, joining, toasting, the, the, the punk rock banging, the angels be bumping, <laughs> high fives. Probably flip like a hundred times and not even get dizzy in the spirit. Take the worst, the most unique Pentecost experience you've ever had and multiply that by 10,000. And that's how they celebrate. The Bible says that when one comes to God, all of heaven rejoices. David took out his clothes back in the BC. They said David danced for God. See, the cross of Jordan, we got to come out of this religious square box we put God in. We got to break all the tradition of man and the generational stuff. Like that song, we got to dust off our shoulders. It's a new thing God going to do. Right. Oh, let me just get the preaching. This is what's going to be all of this. Joshua 3. Now, after God told Joshua all that, he told him Moses was dead. That represents the law being dead. That represents the old way of you being dead. That represents the old way of doing things. He says, but we can't take away those things because those things are our foundationals of faith. Those things built us up. Those things brought us to God. It doesn't mean that that's where you was going to stay at. It just means that that's where you started at. See, it don't matter where you start. It only counts where you finish. You see, imagine if we start, we all started all crooked and crazy, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Didn't even know how to walk straight. We were so crooked and crazy all the time. Doing things that we know that we ought not to do. But we did them anyway. I guess we was that cat, huh? And so after God prepared them and said this in verse, verse uh, chapter 3, it says, Early the next morning, Joshua and all the Israelites left Acacia Grove. Remember that word, Acacia Grove, because I, I want to bring out a point if I get time. Acacia Grove, that's why I've had to change Johnny's preaching to something, because I don't want to stop doing this word that I got. Amen? I don't want to break God's momentum, because God is doing something. And a lot of times when I take a break and come back, and the, the, the anointing has left and it's not the same because you have to ride the wave when the wave is on. Right, surfers? Amen. That's right, all right. And then so, uh, Acacia, Acacia Grove, if I was to tell you that the ark was made out of a special wood, I would tell you that the ark was made out of Acacia wood. Isn't it funny? Now, here we go. We're going to do some logistics here for a minute. To prove this, and God just showed me this this morning while I was reading. I love when I get fresh stuff for y'all. Even though I have a steady stomach, he give me something fresh on top of it. Acacia, Acacia Grove is probably where they have acacia wood trees growing at. Maybe. What a coincidence. I'm going to tell you to pay attention to that. Because the Ark of the Covenant, God gave specific instructions of what kind of wood he wanted it built on. Guess what he did in Exodus? He told him what kind of wood. It's called acacia wood. Exodus 25. So we're going to get to that because this whole thing about the ark is what I'm going to make prevalent to you today. That when you cross the Jordan, you're not crossing by yourself. It says here, it says that uh, they left the Cacia Grove and arrived at the banks of Jordan River where they camped before crossing three days. And three days later, the Israelite officers went through the camp giving these instructions. You guys are the Israel camp. Today I'm going to give you these instructions. So this is God talking to you. Remember I told you the book of Joshua is a prophecy book. Joshua was a prophet. Him and all the next 12 books that you read after that. It's called the seers. They were the prophets of God. And so Joshua said this. He told his, his, his leaders what to do, and he says, I'm going to give these instructions to the people. He said this, when you see the Levitical priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, your God, he wants you to move out of your position and follow them. Marinate in your mind and think of what it means to you. 
It says, three days later, the Israelite officers went to the camp giving these instructions to the people. This instruction was from Joshua, who God spoke to him specific instructions of what he wanted to do to have the Israelites cross the Jordan River. The first thing they had to do was not have fear. The first thing he had to do to Joshua was to promote strength and courage. Because if your leader has fear, you're going to feel it and you're going to receive it in fear. Now remember, the Jordan River, this was at high season where the banks of Jordan were flooded. The water exceeded over 17 feet in each direction in its width. The current of the river was approximately probably 35 to 40 miles an hour. It is the Jordan River is the largest river that supplies water to four countries. This was no ordinary river. This was a scary river, especially during flood season, when all the water was melting down the mountains and coming down the river at a fast pace. And we're going to get to that. And so, he says, when you see the Leviticus priest carrying, carrying the Ark of the Covenant, what was the Ark of the Covenant? Why is the Ark of the Covenant? Well, the Ark was a place of presence for God to be among his people. Quickly, you don't have to. Go to Exodus 25. I want to share this point because God wants me to let you guys know how important this is because this is all going to tie in. Exodus 25 and 8. This is what the Ark of the Covenant is. The Ark of the Covenant was a tabernacle that God had them built while they were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. See, there wasn't a tabernacle that they could build. There wasn't a temple that they could set up shop and come to. So God wanted his people to know, for 40 years, Danny and Vanessa, I'm going to have you go on this journey. But I want you to know I'll never leave you and forsake you. I want you to be strong and be courageous. I want you to follow and meditate on my word. So imagine if God said that to you and then he just disappeared for 40 years. Could you be strong and courageous? going through an unknown territory, going through an unknown land, going through a, a land where everybody wanted to kill you, fearing for your life, you escaped the Egyptians to, to run into the Hezites and the Prezites and the Ammonites and every other tribe that wanted to destroy you, and you're just trying to follow Moses, you're just trying to be a billion, you're just trying to walk out of faith, you're just trying to trust God, you're just trying to cross the Jordan, that's all we got to do, it's only a three-day journey, heck, they went in Exodus and built the Ark of the Covenant out of Acacia Wood, and now we're in Acacia World, that tells you logistically it was close. It was close. On foot, it's three to five day journey. It turned into 40 years. Wow. So imagine if God wasn't there with you. Would you be a bit? Imagine a day serving God. If he's never felt his presence, if he's never blessed you, if you've never seen his hand work, could you serve him? It'd be hard. He's like, God, I gave you my life. You said that if I abide in you, you would abide in me. How come I would feel you? Where are you, God? Is it something I've done? God says, I'm right here. I ain't never went nowhere. Listen, you walk by faith, not by sight. I'm not touching feel me. Just because you can't feel me doesn't mean I'm not there. My promises are yes and amen. I told you, I told you, be strong and courageous. I told you I would never leave you or forsake you. And back to the ark. God says, have the people of Israel build me a holy sanctuary so I can live among them. He didn't say in them. He said among them. He said, you must build the tabernacle and its furnishings exactly according to the pattern I will show you. See, when God says among you, he means so you will be surrounded by him. When God says among you, that means he will be with you. When God says among you, that means he will be in the middle, in the midst of you. When God says among you, that means that he will be in company of you, in the midst of you. 
between you and your circumstance, between you and your hardship, between you and your position. But first you must move out of your position. And first you must choose to follow me. So God is telling you, wherever you came from, whatever you are addicted to, whatever the religion you came from, God says, I'm going to do a new thing. I don't want you thinking like your old church. I don't want you thinking like your old pastor. I don't want you thinking like your old team. This is something new. I want you to move out of your position. Some of our positions is our own self. We've tainted ourselves. We've deceived ourselves. We've talked ourselves out of believing God. We've talked ourselves out of receiving this word. And we've sustained ourselves that I ain't going to go nowhere because I don't know how. This is what God is telling you. I know you know my son and daughter, but I want you to know this. When you see the Ark of the Covenant, which is God, the Ark of the Covenant is not a tool no more. We're not in those days. God is still with you. So when you see God in 2018 moving, you need to move out of your position in 2018 and follow him. Oh my God. I don't know. Would you want me to do what? Have great faith? What's that stuff that pastor was talking about? The, 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 the gift of faith? Give, give me some of that, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know, God. I don't know if I can stand before you because they're, they're telling anybody's a Christian, they're going to lock them up in jail. Oh, I don't know, God. They say if I say the name of Jesus or they catch me praying they, like they did Daniel, they're going to throw me in the, in the snake den. But God says, listen, I've called you for such a time as this. That's why you wasn't born back then. You're born now because it's relevant to what I want you to do. But I need you to shake off that fear. I need you to be strong and, 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 and courageous. I need you to know and obey me when I tell you because we're going to do something that's never been done before. I'm going to ask you to do something that you've never, ever done before. I'm going to put it in your head as a thought, just like you just thought about something right now, just like you just thought about what I just said. Oh, that was good. I know everybody had a thought. When I said, I'm going to put something in your head. You he saying? But see, you just thought about it, didn't you? That's how God's going to function you. You're going to have this crazy thought. Like the first time he told me to go and lay hands on a lady in the hospital that had a gunshot that was getting ready to die. And he told me while I was just got on the plane, I was 36,000 feet in the air reading my Bible. He says, I want you to go anoint darling and pray for her. I looked up, Jesus, is that you? I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought that was me. I thought maybe that was me because I knew about the situation and my mom asked me, they, 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 they told me that and so maybe I was thinking that God, you're going to use me in this thing but maybe, maybe, well maybe my spirit was working that I really wanted to go do something but I can't do nothing like that, God. I'm just a regular man. I mean, what are you going to do, God? They say she's about to die and she's got a hole about the size of this bin in her back and the wound about to hit the baby but God, is that you? I said, God, is that you? Confirm it. Because God will always confirm what he's asking. I said, like, God, I don't want to be foolish and go and, 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 and reach this great faith and, and say, God told me, God told me, because this is what he told me. He told me to go tell her that she's going to be healed in two days after you pray for her. And she's going to get up and go to church, and she's going to give her testimony. I said, God, you out your mind. I was 24 years of age. I said, whoa, 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 what about all them old people that are over there? The, 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 the ones like my mom, and the ones like my dad, and the ones like the whole church, and the, 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 them. I'm in Norfolk, Virginia. They in California, Victorville. We, 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 uh, we. You can't find nobody within 3,000 miles to go over there? Go? Where's my strength? Go? Where's my courage? Fear? God, I'm make a fool out of myself. You know, Moses used to stutter until God healed him. So I imagine I was talking like Moses when God called me and said, I want you to go and tell Pharaoh to let, let, let my people go. He thought that God was studying it, so he started studying it. <laughs> all right, now he was with Jethro and his wife and all the people, and he probably never studied. But as soon as he got a, a job or something from God, he studied. <laughs> yeah, I find that kind of uh, interesting, huh? 
And then God said, shut up, Moses, and go through what I said. And take out your feet, this is holy ground. He said, yes, sir. <laughs> but won't you use Aaron? I'm using you. I said, God, well, won't you have my mama go pray? No. <laughs> Why are you asking me? I, 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 I know. I, because you have great faith. And you have the gift of faith. And I've called you for this purpose. And I'm showing you this miracle at a young age because I'm showing you what you're destined to do for God. And from that day on, I lay hands on the sick in a minute. And I stand with great faith because I'm crossing that Jordan every time I lay hands on someone, believing for a miracle because I'm crossing that spiritual Jordan, amen. I'm doing what God is saying, amen. I'm not walking in fear no more, amen. I got strength and courage, amen. I know that I can do what God has told me to do, amen. It sounded funny. It was a thought, but I said I'm going to be obedient, amen. I said I ain't going to stumble on this one, oh no, God. I said I'm going to try my best, oh God. He says, that's all I want you to do, son. And so some of us are sitting in here and God has been telling you something that he wants you to do and you've been scared. You've been hesitant. You said, God, is that you? You've been wondering what's going on. You've been stuttering. You've been doubting. I didn't tell you that. If that came to your mind, then do it. Now, if God told you, sell your home and go lay in the street butt naked and uh, ask for money and bless everybody to come by you, I would say, no, that's not God. God says for us not to be foolish concerning the things of Christ. I would say that's darn foolish. Don't you think so? So, hey, 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 don't get it twisted, sister, but measure it with the word. If this doesn't bring glory to God, then it didn't come from God. Amen. Oh, let me say it. No, I, I, man, I just love that. No, I just feel, he just being so good to me. If, if it doesn't bring glory to God, then it didn't come from God. Amen. Now, it ain't no simpler than that, amen? Okay, what time is out here for the Lord? Let me do my little thing here. Okay. So back over to Joshua. I just wanted to show you guys about the Ark of the Covenant because the Ark of the Covenant is very, very important for us growing up through this. Because I want you to understand the Ark of the Covenant is God. And when we talk to Israel, we're saying, Israel, when you see God moving Israel, you need to move out of your position, Israel, because you need to follow God, Israel, because God is with you, Israel. He is among you, Israel. That's why he built it, Israel, so he can be among you. Oh, oh, all around you. Oh, oh, in the midst of everything you're doing. Oh, God is there, Israel. Israel, do you hear me? Amen. Amen. Understand that. Principle 101. And <laughs> Understand that God is with you. And God is with you too. Do you understand? Very good. Then you have passed the first test. I'm sorry, guys. I, I don't know how long this is going to be, but all I know is this. Y'all should have missed none of this. This stuff is good. Are you getting fed? Amen. This is a fresh anointing. Do you believe that this is fresh? How many been in his church since it started? This is a different anointing, isn't it? Yes. Okay, okay. So keep your butt in church Why this is good. Look, you got to get it while you're getting good. All right? When I change the say, you can take a break. But don't be missing this word. Now, I'm going to announce every sermon will be here preaching this, so you'll know in advance, Israel, because guess what? And we get done finished, it says, the whole camp crossed the Jordan. And not one was left behind. Because they all obeyed what Joshua had told them. Now, that is an analogy of what's happening spiritually. If you don't leave when God tells you to move out of your comfort zone, to move out of your selfish zone, to move out of your fearful zone, to move out of your being myself and your self-contained zone, 
to move. Yeah, he wants you to be stupidly spiritual crazy about it. He wants you to be wickedly strong. He wants you to be out of your bazonkers. He wants people to say, uh, Noah, it's 120 years. <laughs> you still man, you stupid folk. <laughs> you remember when I preached about Noah? That was a great series. God gave me a revelation what Noah went through year after year. Back all hunched up. Jephthah, give me some more gopher wood, please. And I need some more blue. Lord, you told me a hundred years ago to build it. Look, look, you got that little silver palsy on the to, to build this ark. I ain't got no more nerves in my arms. I didn't lift so much gopher wood. Could you do something for 120 years? Wait, 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 wait. On faith. With no results. With no miracles. Just working for the Lord every day. No, you couldn't. You know why? That's why we have that story, because no man can do what Noah was called to do. You know who Noah's granddaddy was? Enoch. You know what happened to Enoch? God turned him into an angel and he was translated to heaven and he never saw earth. Enoch was no more. Do you know what happened when Noah was born? His hair was white. His body was white. And it said that his, as a baby, he lit up the whole room. For weeks, his parents thought he was possessed. Demonic. So guess who came to tell him what's going on? Enoch, granddaddy, came down and said, this man is called before God. A great work will Noah do. How do you know this man? Because I had to go study in the Hebrew, not the King James Version. I had to go back to find the truth because Noah was supernatural. That's why he could build an ark for 120 years. Stand up. That's why he could cross his Jordan by trusting God, even though he didn't see any rain. He didn't even see a cloud. It said for 120 years, he didn't even see one drop of rain. Oh, my beloved, I don't think y'all understand what kind of faith God is asking you to have. What kind of trust God is asking you to have. When I started this journey, I told you this word that God gave me on this. Those that wasn't here, you need to hear that first word. And it was talking about crossing the is and spiritually becoming the book of Acts and the church of Acts. You will need four things. God told me faith, trust, obedience, and the last thing he said was desire. Desire. Noah had desire to please God on a promise, on a crazy unctioning. Oh, oh, yes, yes, God. <laughs> Some of y'all have had this. Okay. <laughs> this is good. Pay attention. Noah decided to build the ark on a crazy thought he had in his head. On a crazy unction that God gave. I want you to build an ark, huh? Why, right, God? Wait, wait, wait. There's no beach for over a hundred miles. There's no shore. I want you to make it 400 cubits. I want you to build it with this wood. Kind of like it, get, get a chance to go read Exodus 25. God gives specific instructions, dimensions, diameter. Listen, listen. Oh, God, this is too much. told you when I said, God, is that you? Then confirm me. Then once he confirmed me, he gave me specific instructions. He told me to anoint from her feet to her head with oil. And he told me to tell her these words. He gave me specific instructions. He told Noah exactly how he wanted the ark built. He told Moses exactly how he wanted the covenant of the ark built. He told Joshua and exactly how many times he wanted him to walk around the city of Jericho. <laughs> Look, 
he told Moses exactly how he wanted him to command that rock to turn into water. And Moses chose to do it differently. He told Adam and Eve exactly, oh hallelujah, exactly what he said. He said, of all the trees, you don't eat that one. He told you exactly. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, are you feeling this anointing? Are you feeling this word? Listen, listen, listen. God will tell you exactly what he wants you to do. He'll put that thought in your head just to test your courage. Oh, thank you, Father. He'll put that thought in your head just to test your strength. Oh, thank you, Father. He'll put that thought in your head just to test your faith. Ah, ah. Oh, I'm talking to somebody in here. I'm talking to a many people in here. Don't worry, we don't have an altar call. I don't need to lay hands. The word is going out laying hands on you more than I could do. Amen. This word is speaking divinely and directly and personal to your spirit. This is spirit among spirit connecting that you said, oh, well, thank you, Pastor, for giving me that confirmation because I've been having this stupid idea in my head that God wants me to have you know, help now. Because I've been, been stirred about the words you've been giving about crossing my spiritual journey. And we're just getting started. That's why I'm going to take my time with this. I, I feel no need to rest because every service that we've had, the word has been impactful. It's, it's just been renewing it. It's even transforming me as I speak it. And this is the sermon God gave me 10 years ago. It's transforming me because of the prophetic word that Brother Danny sent from this word. This is all expired. Uh, uh, this is all coming out because of the prophecy. All this was in me? Really, God? I didn't know. God, I was about to give up. I was about to quit. I was tired of this little church. God showed me such a great vision of what my life was supposed to be. And every sermon that I get is not for us, it's for the body of Christ. He told me that you're going to be different. You're going to be different. Just like you guys are. Just like everybody in this room is different. Turn around and look at everybody. The shapes, the sizes, the colors, the mentality, the background of where you come from. Why are we all coming to this little church? What's my purpose, God? You know, Mike's not even a religious pastor, God. He's kind of crazy. He says things in the book that I've never heard before. He even cussed. He said, damn. <laughs> and he said, hell. I, I heard that. Yes, sir. That's, that's a cuss word. That's, that's a bad word, God. God says this. When you see the political priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant, I want you to move out of your position. Some of us are holding our position because we think it's our position to stand in. God says, no, it's not your position. That's your old position. That's your false position. That's the position that, that you chose. That's the position that man and his traditions made you stand in. That's the position that your circumstances in life that's, that's your position that your circumstances in life has caused you to take up that position. But God says today as you get this fresh word, I want you to move out of the position of your position that you've been standing in. I want you to move out of that position and get in the position to follow me because I am the Ark of the Covenant and I am the God of Israel. I am Ananiah. I am Elohim. I am Yahweh, your God, the only true God, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the one that is, that was, and that is to come. And when you see me coming to you, when you see me preaching to you, when you see me putting those thoughts and those desires that bring glory to me, I need you 
to move out of your position. And I need you to follow me. We've been holding on to that position like it's something that I cherish. It's a filthy rag. It's a filthy rag. It's a tainted and soiled delusion. God says you're going to have to free yourself of all that before you can cross your dream. You ain't going to be able to think the same way because I will change you from the inside out. I will change the way you think that you never will think the way of that way again. A new thing, I will transform your mind and your thinking. You will become the head and not the tail. You will be able to do those things that I put in your heart. You'll be able to do those things that bring glory to me. God tells us if it doesn't bring glory to God, then it's not of God. I don't think there's anything simpler than that that you can understand, and I don't even think I've ever heard that. I think God just gave that for us because he knows that we're sinful people. Mm. Yes, 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 God. We need to move out of position. All week long, I want you to meditate on what, has, what position have you been taking against God? What has God been saying to you? What has God been functioning you? What, what, how have these sermons started changing the way you think? Because God is doing this through his word. If faith comes from hearing the word, then God is, is renewing our faith, restoring faith for those that have lost their faith, giving you the gift of faith to believe greater than you've ever believed before in your life. circumstances, our scars, our pains, even our own knowledge, Father. Knowledge without spirit is useless. But Father, we've, we've, we've built up this immunity system that we're just going to do things the same way all day, all the time. God, if we read our scriptures, we know that there's something coming. Just like they prophesied that Jesus would come, they prophesied that Jesus is coming again. But they prophesied that you're going to pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Not a new thing you're going to do. Not a thing of the old, but something unorthodox, something out of the ordinary, something that was never done before. God, you showed us how creative you can be when you had Jesus healed in so many ways. Bless you, Father. We bless you, holy name today. God, I thank you for your word that you spoke to us today. I thank you, God, that you are, are, are itching us in a little at a time. Father, I release the gift of faith over all your people in Jesus' name. For this is something that requires great faith, people. God, give us that great faith. Give us that faith, Father. Give us the gift of faith to believe the supernatural. Those things, Father, that we hear about, those stories that we hear about, even today, even on our Facebook Live, Father, they're showing miracles after miracles, Father. God, that shows me you're still alive. That shows me that we're, we're right in the season. Our timing is right in time of what you're doing. God, you say that you're accelerating the time and we are building momentum. Let the momentum begin to build in our lives. Over and over. Over and over. Even right now, Father, 
some of us are in our minds trying to feel this thing. Father, I pray that you would go to their minds and show them clarity in Jesus. Clarity. Father, let them see what you see. Let them see what you see for their lives, God. Give them a glimpse. Give them a glimpse of hope. Give them a vision. Father, you say without vision, people perish. Ponder the whole of us. Father, I thank you for this. To all your people to see them cross the edge of mm. In Jesus' name. Mm. God, you're so good. I can teach you all day. Father, whatever you do, don't take this presence away.